Good morning. This video is about why a frictionless mouthpiece is needed. And uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there who have been very, very critical of this invention, saying that uh, I should just practice more and, um, you know, instead of trying to improve the instrument. Well, let me just say, I practice a lot now already, just so, you know, every morning, every afternoon, every day. So this is not a practice-based issue for me. Um, or they'll say that it is somehow disrespectful to the history of the instrument. Well, would that be true for a uh, piano? Because it came from a harpsichord or a flute, a modern flute that's mechanical when the original was wood. Are we not going to improve the flute because the original was wood? I think you're starting to get my point. So let's, let's get into what is the problem with the um, older historical type of mouthpiece which is lubricated by saliva. Its problem can be put in one word, inconsistent. It is inconsistent because uh, as you're playing, the saliva dissipates and the longer the harp, the worse the problem. And uh, it, it doesn't provide for consistent uh, you know, a feel to the player, and yet consistency is absolutely critical for high-level performance in any field, whether it's a race car. You know, with a race car, when you hit that gas, it's got to go, just like the way the guy's been trained. And when a skater's on figure skates, that blade and that ice need to be pretty darn consistent from what they've practiced with. Same in tennis, and then you get a pretty predictable high quality result. But the more things start shifting, then the worse it gets. And the, the problem is that when there is saliva on the mouthpiece, the movement's pretty good. But a lot of things can happen to make that kind of come apart. One of them is that people who play with tongue block are touching the mouthpiece with the sides of their mouth here and here and their tongue and you know a lot of the world's top players have trouble keeping that movement going when they're playing classical pieces at high speed and there's other forms of music that that have that issue too so um, you know uh, sometimes with this type of mouthpiece depending on the material and the condition and your emotional and mental state the lubrication with saliva works pretty well, but there's a lot of times when it doesn't. Like if you're on a television show, you know, a lot of times you won't get a second take. You, you, gotta, you gotta stand up and play right out of that chair with a microphone. I mean, there's no prep, no chance to reshoot. It's all, you know, it's called tape to live. And you can get nervous and you won't have much saliva. And you, if you're in front of a, thousands of people playing, you can have that problem. You can have that problem at a small gig, even at a, at a little, you know, local restaurant or something. So uh, basically we're setting ourselves up with a, music, uh, a musical instrument that's not consistent. And, and that's very problematic. Now, the frictionless mouthpiece that will go on here it will be consistent the same all the time. It, it will have frictionless motion at all times, and it'll be the same friction motion, motion, sorry, frictionless motion. So it's like it brings a level of consistency to this issue that has never been there before. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed playing standard mouthpieces, but I'm certainly not going to not improve it because of some respect for history or... Uh, some thought that maybe people can overcome the problems. Uh, it, it, certainly it's true that people at the top, like uh, Toot Steelmans and uh, certainly uh, Tommy Riley, uh, reached a very high level uh, of play quality. But that doesn't mean they wouldn't have even done better or enjoyed the process more. Um, one of the worst situations I'm aware of um, it happens with uh, one of the top quintets in uh, Hong Kong, um, where they move so rapidly over their instruments, they have to lift their lip off the mouthpiece and come back down because they can't keep enough saliva on it. 
And, and I am not aware of another wind instrument in existence that you have to remove your mouth from the part that you're in, in, interacting with to get to another note. And, and that's why I say the time is ripe to develop a frictionless mouthpiece where we can articulate and move left and right easily and comfortably and uh, with air tightness preserved. And I really have no nostalgia for the past on this point, but merely excitement for the future and what it's gonna mean for improved comfort and uh, ease of fast movement uh, to new note hole positions in play and how that will impact what we're hearing from artists on the instrument, including me. So I look forward with a lot of enthusiasm and uh, as you know, I gave the idea away so uh, anybody can manufacture it. So I'm not here uh, trying to sell you something. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm just like you. I, I gave it away really so it, a lot of people could make it and therefore bring that price down, you know. So uh, this is no sales pitch. I'm just telling you my thoughts about why it's time in the history of the world to have a, a frictionless mouthpiece for your consideration.